What happened was they were waiting for the train and they thought they had quite a long time to wait for the train and she went to get a cup of coffee and she was pulling a little bag. And they're standing on the station and suddenly he realizes that the train is moving. So he's very athletic, so he runs to get on the train. He runs and he yells at the conductor to stop the train, that they're not on the train, and he runs and he dashes and he grabs the train and he climbs on and he turns and he looks at her and he, he says, run! And she freezes. She doesn't know what's happening. She's got coffee in one hand, a bag in the other. She freezes. Finally, she realizes what's going on and somehow she drops the coffee she pulls the bag, she runs, the train slows down a bit, and she launches herself onto the train and gets on the train. And he turns to her and he says, Why are you so god damned slow? And then there's silence. She's told the story, he looks at the floor, and she looks out the window. And I say, what happened to you? She said, I don't know. I just shut down. I shut down and I went inside. And I don't think we said one word to each other for the rest of the journey home to Canada. And by the time I got here, I couldn't sleep and I felt awful. And I was thinking maybe that the children have gone now and it's just us two and we're not going to make it because I can never please this man. And maybe there is something wrong with me. Maybe I really am not fast enough and not on the ball enough. And I don't, I, I, I did fall when I was hiking and I should have realized the train was moving and I'm never ever going to please him. So I just feel like there's no point. So somehow, the only place I feel safe is to just close down and close him out. And indeed, that makes sense. And the things she said have been said by many withdrawers in many of my sessions. That's the phenomenolog phenomenology that goes with withdrawing in a relationship. And she gets depressed. So I go into that event and I say to him, could you help me? I'd like to slow it down. I'd like to know what happened from your point of view? He said, oh, well, I don't know why we're talking about it. It was no big deal. I probably was, you know, a bit, I apologized, you know, I was a bit um, irritated. But, um, you know, I really don't understand why she holds on to this. There's really no issue here. You know, I mean, I do try to give her advice because I care about her. I say, good, so could you help me please? If you're on the train and you're looking back at the station, I'd like you to tell me what you see. And this is again very EFT. We go into, into key experiences and we unpack them and we find the attachment significance of what's going on. He says, what do you mean? I say, well, you're on the train. What's happening? Help me. And I focus him down and focus him down until he says, the train's moving. I say, I understand. He says, well, I'm very agitated. I mean, my heart's beating, the train's moving, and I, I can see her. And I say, and what's happening? He says, well, I'm getting further and further away from her. The train's moving. I say, yes, the space between you is moving. She's not beside you. She's a long way away. He says, yes, yes. And every minute, she's getting further and further away from me. She's on the station. She's standing. And I'm on the train. And I say, and what do you do? I say, I yell, I yell. I say, come on, come on, run, run. I yell. I say, yes, you're saying I'm moving away from you. Can't you see the distance between us? Run, run, make the effort. Come and be with me. Try harder. He says, yes, I wanted to run. I say, and what do you see? He says, she freezes. She freezes. And the more I scream, the more she freezes. And I'm on the train. I say, yes, all by myself. Yes. And that's what's happening in their relationship for the last three or four years. He's on the train all by himself. And from his point of view, 
he's losing his wife, the gap between them is getting further and further. And his way of dealing with that is to push and give advice and tell her to try harder and tell her to go to the gym because that's what soothes him and calms him and helps him deal with his anxiety. And I say, and what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, the worst thing that can happen is she's going to stay there frozen and quiet. She's not going to try and be with me. She's not going to try because maybe it doesn't even matter that she's with me and I'm on the train and I'm all by myself and you've lost her. Yes. And then he looks at me from a cognitive point. He says, that's ridiculous. I say, is it? <laughs> I want you to get that um, just from listening to a very simple story with a couple that I get in a moment the attachment plot behind what they've brought in with them. This is all about attachment. This is all about his fear of loss, his need to control his partner, to make sure his partner stays healthy, to try and make sure his partner is with him, his fear of losing his partner, his need for connection. And it's easier for him to tell her what to do and tell her how to respond and tell her to go to the gym than it is for him to turn and tell her what he tells her later in therapy, which is, I need you so much. And I get scared when you go away for weeks at a time, even if it's for a good reason, like to take care of somebody. I get scared when you look depressed and withdrawn. I get scared when you don't take care of yourself. I need you so much. And I don't want to tell you that because it means I'm a wimp and I'm pathetic and I'm immature, but I need you. The irony is that with all his pushing and advice, he ended up pushing her away. When he says that and starts to talk about his own need, he starts to pull her towards him. And also when she hears that she's needed, that's a very different message that makes her feel better and come out of her depression rather than what she was hearing before, which was there was something wrong with her.